Okay, today we're going to be drawing a uh, room interior in two-point perspective. So we're going to need a ruler, uh, pencil, paper, and uh, the sheet on here shows us the steps through. So we want to start with our uh, paper going landscape orientation, so it's wide so that it matches the aspect ratio or field of vision. I'm going to start by adding two vanishing points. I don't need the horizon uh, because this is a view inside a room, so I'm not going to be able to see the horizon. But I'm going to mark two vanishing points that are halfway down the paper. So there's one on the right, and then one over here on the left. And I want them to be as far apart as I can get them. So I'm going to keep them both on the paper, but otherwise they'll be spread as far as I can get them. And we'll start by drawing the back corner of the room here. So this is going to be different than drawing a box because we're actually inside of this room. So we're inside of a box. We're drawing a box from the inside. Um, so the steps will be a little bit different than before. So I'm going to draw the back corner of the room here. Uh, I don't want to make the back edge too tall or it's going to look like I'm way in the corner. I'm not going to be able to draw anything in the room. And if I make it really short, it's going to look like the room goes way back into space and it's a big room and the back wall is far away. So I kind of want um, just a couple of inches here. So this is where the horizon would be. So this line should be intersecting the horizon. The horizon's also going to represent our eye level. So we want it maybe a little um, higher up towards the middle of that line probably though. We can also use it to measure things. So for this I'm going to go from that edge away uh, from the vanishing point. So I'm going to line up the left hand vanishing point with the bottom and the top of the edge here and then I'm going to draw from the top of the corner away instead of towards the vanishing point like I do with the boxes. So I'm going to extend these lines a little bit. My ruler is a little too short to get the full line in there. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Line up the vanishing point with the edge of the corner and draw away. Extend this a little further. Alright, so now we basically have our empty room drawn. We've got a left wall, a right wall, a floor, and a ceiling. If you look at the cube here, you can see that it's opposite of the way the box usually looks. I'm drawing it from the inside of the box here. So the next step is going to be to add things onto the wall. So this will be things like uh, doors, windows, posters, anything that's flat and on the wall. Uh, I'm going to add the same way that I uh, drew the walls in the beginning. So we're on this step on the back side, the first step here. And everything that's on the wall is going to have the same orthogonals as the wall itself. So the right hand wall will use the left hand vanishing point and the left hand wall will use the right hand vanishing point. I've got some different squares that could be windows or posters or pictures. I've got a door. I've got kind of a light fixture going on there. So we can add all of those things uh, and anything else that we want to be on the walls. Okay, so I'm going to draw the door here. I'm going to line up uh, the vanishing point, make an orthogonal line along the top. And then for the sides, I'm going to do two vertical lines. So with two-point perspective, we want to remember that any line that is horizontal in real life is going to be drawn as an orthogonal line going to either the left or right-hand vanishing point. 
So if I go to the wrong vanishing point, it'll look wonky. Hopefully I'll be able to pick up on it and correct it, but it should be the same ones I used to draw the top and bottom of the wall. So here's a potentially a window or maybe a poster or a picture. It could be a mirror. Um, there's a number of things we can come up with for this. Kind of anything that's rectangular and flat and on the wall, drawn the same way. So all of these lines are orthogonal lines. Any horizontal line is going to go towards uh, one of those vanishing points. And the further we get away from the horizon, the steeper that angle gets and the more diagonal it gets. All right, so I want vertical lines for the two sides here. Now from this vanishing point, same as I did for the wall, I'm going to draw another window or picture or whatever I want it to be. So I use orthogonals for the top and the bottom and then vertical lines for the sides. I'm going to add a light fixture up above here. So that's going to be the same thing. I'm going to make a rectangle using orthogonals and verticals. Then I'll draw three little foreshortened circles to kind of be the lights. I want to foreshorten them so they look a little more like ellipses or ovals than circles. So I'm seeing them from a little bit of an angle. Now I've got all the wall stuff, so we're going to start adding furniture. So I'm going to draw a chair over here. So this is going to be the back edge of the chair. It's going to be up against the wall. So I need to think about where I'm going to position the chair before I start drawing it. So that's going to be the back edge, and then I'm going to come out from the wall. And this is a little bit different than the order I normally draw in, uh, but it's just to get it positioned correctly. Okay, So this chair is basically a series of boxes. We've got kind of a large box for the seat, and then we've got a taller, thinner box for the back. And the same thing if I want to add arms to it. So I just kind of have to work through this, switching from horizontals to orthogonals. Whenever I do an orthogonal, I need to think about which vanishing point it's going to go to. There's the back edge of the seat, and here's the arm. Just any time I'm going horizontal, it turns into an orthogonal line. I just need to figure out which vanishing point it goes to. So if we're looking at this chair, right now what I'm drawing is the left side of the chair. That's going to the orthogonals there are going to go to the left hand vanishing point. And then this will be the right side of the chair, so that will go towards the right hand vanishing point. I kind of have to draw in these lines little by little to try to get them to all fit together. 
properly. So the back edges of the arms there will be uh, along the same orthogonal line. Now I'll draw the rest of the back of the chair. back of the arm and here's the top this is getting close to the horizon so that's going to make the top really small uh, it's going to make it so we can only see a little sliver of the top of the chair the closer it is to the horizon the less of it we'll be able to see okay so there's our chair we can erase our extra lines and the ones that are being overlapped by the chair now. So next I'm going to add a table. So to draw the table I basically want to think about starting by drawing a box. So I want to draw a box that's just big enough to fit the table I want to draw inside of it. and We're going to basically turn that box into a table. So I start with that front edge and then I do the right and left orthogonal lines. And I'm going to draw the back here. Fill in that orthogonal line I missed earlier. Back of the left hand side. Then we do those opposing orthogonals, going this way, going this way, race out where we were overlapping, draw the rest of the table. So this will be like the bottom edge of the top of the table, and then we can make legs going down. And you can kind of get creative with this. Uh, you can make the table however you want it to look. And I think like the more you kind of get creative with this, the funner it is. Um, I'd recommend maybe trying to think about like the story behind the room you're drawing. I think the more of a story you have uh, to your room, the more interesting it's going to look and the more fun it's going to be to make it. So it's always just figuring out which way the orthogonal lines go and drawing them in. Alright, so there's our simple table. It's a real chunky, chunky looking table. I've got that light fixture up there. I can show you how to do that. There's some cool tricks we can use uh, for that part as well. Alright, so now we're going to draw that light fixture hanging from above. This is kind of a boxy light fixture. So we're going to start with the front edge. And we're going to draw right orthogonals and left orthogonals. We'll draw the backs. And the opposing orthogonals.
darken these up a little bit. Now I'm going to do a little trick. So I want to draw a sort of cord suspending it from the ceiling, but I want it to be in the middle. So if I make an X by connecting the corners of those boxes where the lines cross each other, that's going to be the center of the box. So I can just kind of draw vertically from that center point, and it'll look like there's a cable coming up from the center of the light fixture there. I'm going to add a bookshelf. I'm actually going to make this the back edge. It's going to kind of go back this way. So this is basically just drawing sort of a flat box up against the wall. Then we'll add the shelves on. As you can see, this is like getting close to the vanishing point, so the angle on the orthogonals gets really steep. A vertical line right there. Probably generally a good idea to not get too close to the vanishing points. When you start to get close to them, it can make the drawing kind of wonky, so you might not want to draw anything that's too close. A bookshelf is kind of pushing it. So you can't really see the top of the bookshelf because it's so close to the horizon. Here I'll add the shelves. So the front of the shelves are going to follow the same orthogonal lines as the top and bottom of the bookcase. Give it a little bit of thickness right there. go with orthogonals going to the right hand vanishing point to show the depth of the shelves. So here's the back of the bookcase and so now we can draw the depth of the shelves. bit of thickness down here. And on the side here. We'll erase some of that out. There we go. We can add things on the shelves, like books. Again, 
I just freehand and add these in. If I add these touches that are kind of not within the linear perspective, it kind of makes the drawing look more believable. If everything's super perspective-y, um, it doesn't look right. So we want to add some things that aren't bound by linear perspective, like maybe the books, maybe a bowl of fruit. Um, and that tends to, maybe some curtains on the windows, that would be a good one. And that tends to make the drawing look a little more natural and realistic. And if everything is super lined up and in perfect perspective. And here's a rug on the floor. You just keep adding details, whatever you want to add. All right, so that's the basic idea for a two-point perspective room interior. Um, so you can kind of add whatever you want. And like I was saying, I think, think of a story that you want to tell uh, with your room. Who lives there? What's the room for? A home or an office? Who knows? But I think the more idea you have, the better your work's going to turn out. All right, thank you. See you next time.